Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this we're going to do a video. We're going to be discussing AMD, specifically the Radeon Technologies Group head Raja Kodori taking a sabbatical. A number of you have messaged me regarding this, and quite frankly, despite the fact that I'm currently knee deep in benchmarking Vega, it seemed very pertinent that I actually cover this very topic. So the first thing I'll do is read out the basin, the letter, and then obviously we can start getting into some dialogue of what this could possibly mean for Raja and his career, as well as the Vega um, launch itself, as in do AMD feel that perhaps it wasn't quite up to snuff, and naturally the whole division of RTG. So first things first, you haven't heard from me collectively in a while, a symptom of not only of the whirlwind of launching Vega, but simply the huge number of demands on my time since the formation of RTG. Looking back over this short period, it has been an impressive view. We have delivered six straight quarters of double-digit growth in graphics, culminating in the launch of Vega and being back in high performance. What we have done with Vega is unparalleled. We entered the high-end gaming, professional, workstation and machine intelligence markets with Vega in a very short period of time. The demand for Vega and Polaris is fantastic, and the overall momentum of our graphics is strong. Incredibly, we as AMD have also managed to spectacularly re-enter the high-performance CPU segments as well. We are all exceptionally proud of Ryzen, Epic, and Threadripper. The computing world is not the same anymore, and the whole world is cheering for AMD. Congratulations and thanks to those in the RTG who have helped see these products through. The market for high-performance computing is an explosive growth tra trajectory, excuse me, driven by machine intelligence, visual cloud, blockchain, and other exciting new workloads. Our vision of immense and distinctive uh, computing within that grasp. As we enter 2018, I will shift my focus more towards the architecting and realizing this vision and rebalancing operational responsibilities. We'll get to that part in a minute, trust me. At the beginning of the year, I warned that Vega would be very hard. At the time, some folks just didn't believe me. Now many of you understand what I said. Vega is indeed hard on many. And my sincere heartfelt thanks to all of you who have endured the Vega journey with me. Vega was personally hard on me as well, and used up a lot of family credits during this journey. I have decided to take time off in Q4 to spend time with my family. And I've been contemplating this for a while now, and there was just never a good time to do it. Lisa and I agreed that Q4 is better than 2018 before the next wave of product excitement. That's also quite an interesting statement. Lisa will be acting as the leader of RTG during my absence, and my sincere thanks to Lisa and the rest of AET for supporting me in this decision and agreeing to take on additional work during my absence. I look forward to to taking my time off uh, September 25th and returning December. Thank you all for your unwavering focus, blah, 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 blah. Let's keep the momentum going. Okay, so now we've read the official statement. What do we actually make of this? Let's see if we can come to some understanding of what possibly could be the underlying reasoning. Well, first things first, I'm just going to get it out and over with. I do feel he is actually tired. He did have a week off in India, but he was still overlooking manufacturing facilities and honestly he's been hard at work since he first really was appointed this position and it's not an easy job he's probably along with many others in uh, rtg been working really long hours and it's not just like you know you can say this project's done when it's done obviously they had deadlines to meet so whether you were an engineer, whether you were working in the driver department, whether you were a marketing guy, whether you were working as perhaps, you know, the office administrator or the HR department or perhaps a project manager, whatever it was, you were working probably really long hours. And we've all had that crunch time. It's quite common in gaming. And my own example, yes, I'm not saying I'm the hardest working individual ever, but for about two years, I was working in London. So I was getting up around 6 a.m., getting to work around half eight, nine o'clock, finishing, getting back home at around six, and then either going to the gym and then coming back home at seven or immediately starting work on RGT until, let's say, half ten. And that's how I was for about mm, that's 18 months to two years. Honestly, it battered me. Um, and I wasn't doing too well. Like, health-wise, my, my energy levels, mental... Um, 
my mental uh, focus just went downhill and I had to just essentially stop working in London and get a job closer to me because I just I just couldn't do it. It was absolutely destroying me and I really enjoyed creating content on RGT and I still do. So, you know, it, it was basically just, I, I just couldn't continue with that. Um, with that. And I, many who have worked in a job where you have deadlines, and I think most of us have, understand this, that, you know, sometimes it's not nine to five, it's nine to whenever the hell. Um, and this is very also common in banking, for example. So I do feel exhaustion is definitely part of this. I don't think he's being fired or any other crazy theories that are going around online. So there are a couple of other obvious ones. The first is that AMD are just not feeling confident in the direction he's pushing Radeon Technologies Group. But I do have a problem with that. Specifically that A, Vega and the Polaris series have been selling pretty well. And B... To blame Araja for Vega architecture is kind of dishonest because it was so far along in development. Now, that's not to say that Vega has been perfect. And honestly, I'm between the two camps. I feel that it's not up to the expectations that we had for it. Simply because it's about a year. Yes, I'm being rough here. But about a year after the launch of Pascal. And we only have performance which is slightly better than NVIDIA's uh, you know, competitor. <clears throat> now, that isn't to say that it's a bad card, and I do think driver revisions are going to improve things, especially of the 56. I, f I mean, we had a video, I released a video just a few days ago. You can go ahead and watch it if you want. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. And basically, I took a 56 and overclocked it, undervolted it, do a few other tweaks, and the performance just went up drastically within spitting distance of a GTX 1080. That's a very impressive. So, reading this sentence one more time, I don't think that he's being punished. Now, that's not to say that Raja doesn't have weaknesses, although I would also say that Lisa Su has those same weaknesses, maybe not to such a degree, and that is that they don't have the stage presence of, let's say, Jensen from NVIDIA. However, Intel and stage presence also don't really go hand in hand either. If you saw the live presentation of Coffee Lake, there were a few moments where you were just like, eee, I'm kind of cringing here, eee, make this be finished, eee, I don't like this. You could just tell they were really uncomfortable on camera, which I get. Like, if you're not used to being on camera, kind of weird. But there were some people which can kind of deal with it. And Raja, I wouldn't say he's dry, but I, I just... You know, I think he's a really nice guy. I think he's very knowledgeable. And he has a lot of passion. But sometimes I don't think that he communicates that passion as well as Jensen. But in Raja's defense, it's because Raja is more a, a tech guy. He's just someone who likes technology. He's someone who wants to, to basically show you, yay, look what we've created here. That's what excites him. The, the actual architecture excites Raja, the technology excites Raja, you know, innovation excites Raja. He doesn't just do well converting that to marketing speak. Now, that's not to say he can't, and he has had a few marketing blunders. I'm not going to go into those on this video. We all know what they are. But Jensen has the stage presence, and he... I, I don't want to say he's a salesman, because that that's cheapening his, his knowledge. And um, honestly... I, I think he would be a very interesting person to meet. I would love to speak to him. I think he would be a really cool person to, to either interview or just have a coffee with and just be like, dude, what do you think of this? And I think he would be someone who's incredibly knowledgeable because obviously he wouldn't be in that position. But when he's on stage, he knows how to market stuff. And that's one area that Raja and AMD, to be honest, even Lisa Su isn't quite up to snuff with. With that said, there are a couple of reasons that I do feel that Raja will have operational responsibilities, that is, balancing the books, that type of stuff, perhaps somewhat diminished. And that's not to punish Raja, to say you've been a bad boy, Raja. It's more to say that... I feel that Navi 
and perhaps also Vega 20 and Vega 11. Vega 20, of course, is the, the ultra high end compute focused uh, GPU. We discussed that a few weeks ago or a week ago. And Vega 11, which I discussed a few days ago, it's essentially the shrunk version of uh, Vega 10. So essentially, it's going to be the replacement of the 580s, the 570s. You get the point. That plus Navi is really going to require his attention. And that's probably the area that, that Lisa. Forget Lisa, actually AMD need him to focus on because that's where he's strong with. The second thing, and very much going into that same point, I suppose, Zen itself was very impressive. Now, one can make an argument that yes, Intel win in this benchmark or AMD win in that benchmark, but forget all that. The fact is people can actually have that conversation. That's not to say that Zen is perfect. It has some workload issues. It had some really big problems with its BIOS on launch. The memory problems where it wasn't running uh, 100%. It basically, stability on high clock speeds on memory just sucked. And that was an issue. It's, it's better now. But I do feel that they should have worked on the BIOS a bit longer. The other issue, and pretty obvious one, it doesn't have the clock speed. Now, that's not to say that it's meager, that's not to say that it's crap, but a couple hundred extra megahertz, let's say if it had been 4.2 to 4.4, that would have been incredible. However, they did hit around the 4 gigahertz mark, which honestly was enough. It was enough to make Intel feel very uncomfortable. The problem is, it's almost like Intel, um, uh, sorry, it's almost like, um, uh, I don't like to use this, this example, but it's almost like you and a little and your brother so your big brother um goes to college then he goes to university and then ends up being a rocket scientist for nasa you go through college you go through university and you end up let's say teaching in your local college now am i saying that teachers are not gifted am i saying that teachers are not skilled no but if you were to look at those two things in the eyes of the average public, you know, the average public member, member of the public, Jesus, I cannot speak today, they would obviously be considerably more impressed with the individual who is now working at NASA. And yes, it's a crappy example, but hey, it was just one that I kind of fought off the cuff. That's the thing with AMD. Vega is not a bad part. It is impressive. And I honestly feel that the architecture itself has a lot more room to grow. I think driver revisions will help. The shrinking of the process down to 7nm, plus obvious architectural tweaks, will definitely improve things. However, Zen was just... It just slapped people upside the head. And here's the other thing. Expectation. Now, if you looked at the... PR literature, the marketing literature, the public statements with Zen. If anything, AMD were actually coy because we were hearing 40% IPC, you know, that type of stuff. Ended up being 52. So we actually took these statements at face value uh, when it came to Vega. People were reading things like poor, poor Volta, or we were reading stuff like you know, we were looking at the early benchmarks and we were, we were thinking, hey, hang on, this GPU has like 12 point odd T flops of compute performance. It's got high bandwidth memory too. They've got primitive disk card. You know, we'll, we'll go through all these advantages, all of these changes, HBCC and all this stuff. And we were just thinking in our heads, you know, this architecture is completely new. There's no way that this card cannot fail to impress because Zen did, Zen hit all the boxes. It just, it smashed our expectations. And obviously, if one of your products does that, we're thinking, hey, their, their marketing department was accurate with that. Now, that's not once again to say that Vega was bad, but it is to say that Vega has problems. And we all know what those are. So I think that Raja is possibly either just really bloody tired and just needs some time off. And when he comes back, he will still be in charge of RTG, but possibly with someone else taking some of the responsibilities, however that would work, I don't know. Or he'll step down and basically focus on engineering because that's where they need him. Now, either way, I'm good because I, I think that AMD need to do this because 
I have criticised AMD a bit recently. That's not to say in a bad way. That's not to say that you suck or anything like that. But I have been vocal and said that there are issues with their, you know, with their graphics card. However, I want them to bloody well be good. Just like I wanted them to crush Intel for a bit. That's not to say I dislike Intel. I, I don't. I have no issues with Intel. In fact, some people get pretty pissed off because I say, you know, as much as I don't like some of the stuff that Intel have done, I don't hate them as a company. They are the big bad that everyone can really rally behind. You know, but I don't hate them as a company. I don't hate NVIDIA. I don't hate any of these companies. I, I want all companies to be as competitive as possible. No one to go under. And admittedly, this is possibly like La La Land here. But I want everyone to put out really good products so we as customers get the best opportunities possible to buy the best hardware possible. But anyway, let's see what happens. He's not going to be back until December. So I say don't get on his case. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, and let's just see what happens with the whole thing. With all of that said, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.